Hello, this is Chuck. We are back again with another set of the novelist. I don't quite know what the story <laughs> this I saw this, but I'm just gonna click continue game. Okay, good, the stuff's off here, so catching up. Somewhere. I mean Tommy continued to struggle. Barb, sorry it's been so long since I've written. Things have been hectic around here, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get things back on track. I don't really want to get into it, but we're getting pulled in a lot of different directions right now. Nothing hurtful, just competing priorities, I guess. Although those can get worse and worse over time. I mean, Dan and I, before we got up here, you know we'd started to drift. Look at that. I said I didn't want to get into it, and I did anyway. Enough about me. Please tell me you're doing well, and I hope this doesn't stress you out too much. I promise to write a happier letter soon. Yours always, Linda. Okay, let's get back in here. Uh, there's a letter on the table. Oh my goodness. Oh, damn. Is there no way? The sounds work in my head, okay. Okay, so now there's a lot more lights off. Is there anything in the kitchen here? Not that I can tell. Ah. Okay. Consume. Oh. Mr. Mrs. Kaplan, I want to stress that it's perfectly normal for some children to fall behind in a specific area. In a specific area. Tommy may be struggling with reading comprehension, but his verbal and visual abilities are excellent. That said, he won't catch up on his own. He will need support from both of you. I rec recommend that you do the attached exercises with Tommy every weekday morning for one to two hours. He'll be unable to focus exclusively on these for two straight hours, so you'll need to take inter intermittent breaks. But use your judgment and stay with it as long as you feel he can stay engaged. I suggest that you do your sessions in the morning before he tires himself out and becomes distracted. I feel confident that with a supportive environment and dedicated exercise, he will catch up with the other children in his class. Please be in touch if you have any questions, Dr. Donald Samuel. Shoot. I don't know where he's going. Okay. Ooh. This one's still on. Is there, this looks like there's something on there. Yeah. We can make time. Oh, and there's... Okay, two oh, things are in yeah. here. Are you gonna leave anytime soon? Okay, well, while... Will it make me smarter? Honey, listen to me. You are smart. Oh, he's gonna be bullied. <laughs> Can't 
get it. Okay, so we need to search Tommy's place for more clues. Doesn't like books. Okay. Hey, mommy. Hey, pumpkin. Man said to do the Lonnie book every morning. Damn, father's That's coming my little upstairs. Man. Fine, dad. Meantime. Shoot, I can't waste the time. For some reason, I keep thinking, I have to remember, I have to press W. Like, it specifically has to be W. I can't go sideways, anything like that. So we need two things are in here. This letter might come from out of the blue, but do you remember when you told me about Bobby falling behind on reading? Looks like we're there with Tommy. We knew he was struggling when we came up here, but his teacher gave us a list of books for him to work on over the break and said we should see how he responded to the change in environment. She gave us a few sample readings and told us to keep an eye on how he was grasping the concepts. Tommy still isn't there, and long story short, the pediatrician in town knows a specialist who gave us some exercises to try. They seem pretty straightforward, but I wanted to write and see if you had any tips that helped you guys with Bobby. Damn. Just realized I didn't even ask how you've been. I'm sorry. This stuff is just a lot to think about. Damn. Perfect schedule, aka the single unattached writer's guide. Uh, ten, write, eat, step away, write, eat. Hmm. <laughs> time. Time, time, time. I guess it'd all be easier if I didn't ever have to sleep. Last night after Linda went to bed, I spent some time, there's that word again, trying to make everything fit. I even drew up a little chart. The math is simple. It doesn't work. Technically, I could still get in eight hours, assuming I don't eat or need to do anything that's not writing. But what about letters, reading, dealing with Paul? Hell, what about doing the dishes or taking out the trash? Not to mention the knocking off for the day isn't like flipping off a switch. It takes time to crawl out of my head and start functioning like a normal person again. And I can't just split it up into smaller chunks. Sometimes it takes an hour of false starts just to get going on anything usable. And stopping just sends the whole process right back to square one. Something's got to give. Okay. Okay, so this is the book for Tommy. Okay, uh, search memories for clues. Looks like we might have everything for him. Okay, so she's so important. moved, but I can see in the back there. Okay, <laughs> definitely can't do that one. But we can get it. We can get from here. We barely talked yesterday. Well, you're right. I guess we've just been so busy. It's upstairs. Sounds like it's upstairs. We've been back from camping for three days, and I'm still buzzing. Before we left, I did some research and found two great hikes, and I put together enough food for us to cook every meal with a real fire instead of having to worry about hiking back to the car or going into Primeville for supplies. It was just what I needed. Sleeping under the stars, swimming in the lake, exploring new trails, even drinking a few beers by the campfire. Not a soul around but us. 
Oh, yeah. Whew. <laughs> okay, but I can't do anything, or I'm very wary of doing anything. Oop, who's moving? Kid? Kid's moving. Can't move forward from here. Damn. Ooh. Oh, did I already read his? What? Oh, it's this search memories. Okay, well, it's for the best anyway, because I will have gone me caught. Damn, the kid's in here. Gang up, leave. <laughs> I need you to go. Thank you. Here we go. Dan and I had a good conversation today. Well, we'll have to wait and see if it was actually good, but I feel like I got my point across about family time. We've been getting a little frayed on the little things lately, and it reminded me of something Anne said one time Love is a behavior, not an emotion. If something's important to you, you show it with your actions. We weren't doing so well with that before we got here. I told Dan my idea. I want us all to eat together at 7 every night with family time after that. Tommy's wiped out by 8.30, so we'd get a solid hour and a half as a family, and then Dan and I could have the rest of the night to ourselves. And I think 7's a reasonable request. The rest of the working world knocks off at 5, right? It doesn't really matter what we do with the time, just that we spend it together. It's easy to make excuses when you've got a lot going on, which is why patterns help. I hope he feels the same way. Oh, that's the kid going upstairs. Ideas, weekly outing, wear, Tuesday movie night, check channel guide, go to town, family dinners, too old fashioned, picnic, farmer's market. Okay, read her thoughts for clues, search his memories for more clues. Okay, we already... Red inside of Linda's mind. Hey, thanks you for coming around. It's weird because I feel like some of these sometimes these things can be connected together. That one's not on. Oh. The hell. It's not that I don't like having fun, it's just there's a rhythm to writing, a routine, muscle memory. Trying to keep notes in a notebook isn't the same as sitting down to a blank page and feeling the silence, knowing that you've got to make that typewriter make some noise. There's certainly something to be said for getting away from your work for a bit, but there's no getting away from the book this late in the game, only a feeling that you're not working as hard as you should be. There's a busted mailbox on Bypass 66 to prove it. Okay. Nope, upstairs definitely. Whoa. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have snapped. I just. I just. I just. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have snapped. Okay, new rule: don't disturb me if the door to my office is closed. Okay, just because I think. It's kind of the weird thing where, because these are all interconnected in a lot of ways. Interconnected in a lot of ways. So do I choose the office door? That's my question. Go away. Kids going downstairs. Because if he gets worse at his work, he actually ends up also, because if you saw during the last set, Kind of almost endangered the family there. Okay, and then we're going to choose Tommy's. Ah. <laughs> but in the meantime, I need to find myself a book to read. It's two of them right here. 
the diary of Kate Williams, May 8, 1952. Jay is gone and I am alone. That is the sum of it. No other thought enters my mind. Wed 38 years, now alone. A senseless accident has taken Jay from me. What I should do with myself, I do not know. Money is no worry. Time? Time, that is the thing. There is so much of it still ahead of me. I have been blessed with health, but that blessing is now a curse. It is nothing more than the curse of my of time alone without Jay. I attempt to look ahead, but cannot envision a path without Jay. For as long as I had no need to imagine one, the children do not understand why I have come to this house alone, as they cannot understand my loss. May 12th, 1952. I cannot say that I feel better than I did upon arriving, for Jay is still gone, but I do feel a change. Some glimmer of a path is taking form in my mind. I cannot describe it other than a narrowing of thought. Perhaps time alone is to be thanked, or perhaps it is something else, something unknown. Today I drove to McClendon's to buy coffee, wine, and vegetables, although I was not due to run short of those for a few days more. I confess I went to hear human voices to be around the living. I conversed with a pleasant couple, and it did me no measure, small measure of good. My first words come out as a croak, and I realized I had not spoken in days. A small reminder of my solitary days here, alone with my thoughts, thinking of Jay, staring at the sea just over the cliff, but I must confess that my gaze always drifts from the sea to the edge of the cliff. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I always check these washrooms. There's never anything in here. Nothing, nothing glowing. Laugh at me. No? Okay. So we... Tommy's book. Okay, this is the compromise we're going for. I chose it, right? Okay. Why is she so so when Dan couldn't come up with a schedule that worked for everyone, he made the decision to protect his working hours. He has not to be disturbed his office doors were closed and for the rest of the summer, he stuck a strict schedule with dedicated writing time every day. And Dan found a way to be there for the first half of Tommy's morning exercises. It was hard for Tommy to understand why his father, Ryder, couldn't be there for the whole session, but he learned to accept his father was willing to offer. What his father was willing to offer. Linda and Tommy got used to eating dinner without Dan, and most nights he stopped working just long enough to kiss Tommy goodnight before heading up his dinner in the oven. Heating up Dan and Linda still found time to catch up a few nights a week, but most of the time they were ships passing the night, each on their own course. As July came to an end, the Kaplan's lives had developed a pattern. Dan finished his first draft and he almost ran to the mailbox to send a copy to Paul. He knew it was good and he wanted to show his agent that he was close to something great. If he could just keep it together a little longer, he would have a book he was proud of. And on the following Tuesday, Tommy put on an art show in the den, explaining his drawings to his parents one by one. Dan was polite and paid attention, but he wanted to be somewhere else. He smiled at the right times, but he didn't engage Tommy or praise his work. Tommy could tell his father was bored, so he cut the show short. He didn't draw for a week. On fr Friday, Dan and Linda both knocked off early, took Tommy to his aunt's house and drove to the bed and breakfast. They barely left their room. The guests in the room below complained of noises, but the owner, who assumed that Dan and Linda were on their honeymoon offered to move the guests to a different room instead. 
They still had a month left, but Dan's chances to change the course of the summer were growing fewer. 